Fertilizer policy and direct benefit transfer DBT. Fertilizer are crucial productivity augmenting inputs to meet the challenge of rising demand of food, feed and fiber with limited land and water resources. It is imperative to augment land productivity and one way to do this is to make fertilizer easily accessible to farmers. With this end in view, fertilizer sector in the country is subsidized. Food grain production has increased to more than comfortable level and much of this increase came in the post green revolution period when high yielding variety seeds along with irrigation and fertilizer usage picked up pace. Chemical fertilizer have played an important role in increasing grain production. Keeping in mind the importance of agriculture in any sizable country to feed its people, the form of subsidization has often varied with most developed countries having moved from price support to income support with the notable exceptions of Japan and South Korea. However, India extends support to agriculture primarily through price policy be it for output or input. It is in this context that one should see fertilizer pricing and subsidy issues in India. The fertilizer subsidy is one of the three big ticket items of the basket of total subsidies in the country. It commands over one fourth of the total subsidy in 2020-21. Crops require right mix of three fertilizer, number one nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium is popularly called NPK. Nitrogen are simply urea helps in plant growth and development. Phosphorus on RP accelerate blooming and also helps plant to withstand stress. Potassium on the other hand helps to the process of photosynthesis and is essential to plant growth. The functions of these nutrients are complementary and do not substitute one another. Balanced fertilizer of soil would mean application of all of these nutrients in the soil in correct proportion using appropriate methods and in a timely fashion to that the soil remains healthy and fertile to ensure increasing grain production on a sustainable basis. The requirement of three different nutrients vary from crop to crop, soil to soil and All India recommended doses of NPK is, the, is in the ratio of 4 is to 2 is to 1 on an average. That means if 10 kg of potassium is required to be used in a certain crop in a given piece of holdings, 20 kg of phosphorus and 40 kg of urea is to be applied. However, ground reality show that over 60 kg of urea edge against the requirement of 40 kg is applied. Clearly, consumption ratio has been highly skewed in favor of urea. Imbalanced use of NPK has led to loss of fertility in soil over a period of time, which affects efficiency of fertilizer use and crop productivity. A question arises as why has skewedness in the application of fertilizer crept in in the first place. To deepen the understanding of this, let us have a look at pricing policy of fertilizers. Urea, the only controlled fertilizer, is sold at statutory notified uniform sale price and decontrolled phosphatic and potassium fertilizer are sold at an, at an indicative maximum retail price. While the prices of urea are fixed and subsidies float, it is the other way around in case of P and K. The current price of urea at rupees 5360 per ton just as an example is low due to subsidy in relation to about 3 to 5 times price of the other two nutrients. Favorable pricing policy of urea in comparison to other two nutrients has driven farmers to overuse urea thus pricing policy impinges on balanced use of fertilizer. Of late consumption ratio of urea in relation to other two nutrients has ebbed somewhat. It may also be noted that the measures like neem coating of urea has reduced its diversion to non-agriculture purposes which makes it appear it, as if the actual consumption of this fertilizer in the agriculture sector has declined. In any case, overuse of urea had double whammy and needs to be fixed on priority. First, it extracts higher than necessary domestic resource cost that is DRCs in production of urea 
in excess of real demand and secondly it damages soil which impinges on productivity. A more fundamental question arises as to why fertilizer sub subsidy was introduced in the first place. In the backdrop of food scarcity in the country, price concession on inputs such as fertilizer was offered to increase their adoption and thereby augmentation of production. Food security vision of India was driving the agriculture sector. High yielding variety HYV needed intensive use of inputs like water and fertilizer. To promote use of fertilizer, its prices were subsidized. Since the agriculture market were not efficient enough to discover remunerative prices of the output, they had to be offered price support in the form of minimum support price that is called MSP. This chain comprising several links came to be built on heavy subsidy at each stage. It turns out to be a typical case of acquiring a cat to keep off the rat, which then necessitated acquisition of a cow to produce milk for the cat reared at home and so on. Due to subsidized price of urea in India, there have been cases of smuggling to neighboring countries and diversion to industrial use, besides other misuses of subsidy. To improve efficiency and cost effectiveness of subsidy, the government of India has introduced DBT system for fertilizer subsidy payment under which 100% of subsidy on various fertilizer grades is released to fertilizer company on the basis of actual sale made by the retailer to the beneficiary. Let us have a look at current form of DBT. Sale of all subsidized fertilizer to farmer is now made through point of sale devices that is POS devices installed at each retailer shops. Aadhaar enabled fertilizer distribution system has been introduced. The farmers will continue to purchase urea at statutory subsidized prices as earlier. The fertilizer company which used to receive subsidy on receipt of fertilizer at the district level now gets subsidy after sale to farmers by retailers through POS machines upon biometric authentication. The point of sale devices have been installed at each retail shop. The DBT approach enables to track movements at the lowest formation of the administrative setup and ensures availability of fertilizer to all farmers. However, this version of DBT does not help much in terms of balanced use of various types of fertilizer, nor does it empower farmers with the freedom of choice to choose their crop. What is the way ahead? Cash transfer directly to the farmers in lieu of fertilizers at subsidized prices will benefit them as they would be empowered to choose the fertilizer combination best suited to their soil texture without the influence of the distorted. This will give the farmers the freedom of choice to produce any crop that do not require urea. Currently, the extent instrument of pricing policy of subsidies nudge farmers to produce more of crops like wheat and rice which requires use of urea. In contrast, farmers are disinclined to produce more of pulses just as an example as this crop requires fertilizer other than urea which are relatively expensive. Consequently, production mix continue to remain out of sync with demand. This entails its own opportunity cost. The solution lies in freeing up subsidizing fertilizer as an input and give cash directly to the farmers on per hectare basis in lieu of this subsidy. A prerequisite for real DBT is digitization of land records. Without setting the land records right, it will not be possible to transfer the subsidy to beneficiaries. Though the process of digitization of land records was launched in August 2008, but has not gathered momentum in many states. This calls for a state to take up the issue immediately. According to an estimate, if cash amount of rupees 5000 hectare is transferred in lieu of fertilizer subsidy to semi-medium farmer, that is the middle group, and to others in a graded system, higher amount to farmer with the smaller holding and lesser amount to large farmer. It would not lead to any additional net outgo from the exchequer over and above the current level of fertilizer subsidy. 
the proposed DBT would empower farmers to choose the fertilizer combination best suited to the crop they choose to grow. The soil texture without the influence of distorted price relative of NPK. It will be a win-win situation if the government walks the last mile in fully implementing DBT in case of fertilizer subsidy.